um, it, it's it, Israel is quite a, a literate society, and you have literate people on on all sort of domains, and and the proximity that sometimes you have in the same family between a human right defender and a human right violator sitting around the, the Friday table or the Passover table uh, is astounding. But, you know, it, and it's a very Israeli kind of phenomenon. A lot of my work initially I was doing because my cousins were in the army. And although they were of very different political persuasion that, to me, they were, you know, I was their cousin and they were telling me what was going on and I could... Um, research things like that. Uh, the, the story with the Israeli philosophers actually started with um, 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 a, a woman, a, a, actually a, a very, very important uh, Israeli feminist scholar called Hannah Naveh, whose husband was a military man, and he went to her library, like, like you go, he went to the other room, to the other study, and picked up her books. Uh, but in fact, the, the, the question here is structural. When Israel needed to enter into urban warfare, that is to say, to occupy again the Palestinian cities, there was no existing, or there was not much existing military doctrine on urban warfare at the time. Um, armies were used to either bombing from the air or making tank warfare on the ground. And in order to understand the city as a complex environment, the whole bo the only body of work that existed was post-colonial studies. It is showing you how different, how a city is, is layered uh, with identities and um, to a certain extent with frictions inside of it. Um, urban studies that show you complexity and artistic and philosophical practices that, that also discuss how to use that complexity. So they were they were uh, approaching, they were attracted to this philosophy because it was what they, what was needed at a time in order to understand the city, not simply as building, but as a complex and layered system uh, in which both meaning and physicality operate together. Right? To control the city, it's not enough to control the streets, but you need actually to control the meaning of things uh, in the city, and therefore humanities is important. Um, as I mentioned before, the focus now, the strategic focus these days, and Israel's most important export and most important development is in cyber technologies. And, um, and unfortunately, again, there is uh, enormous amount of sophistication that uh, were tested out on a kind of a captive population, on the Palestinians, taken as a lab. Uh, they are being surveyed by the military and the secret services. The phone calls are monitored. All sort of algorithm, there is not enough people to listen to all those phone calls. You need to create systems of artificial intelligence to actually interpret conversation volume, increasingly volume of conversation. There is this technology developing, and now that technology is readily available and is one of Israel's most um, meaningful export, also because it is sold to countries that are nominally, or you understand them, to be enemies of Israel, like Saudi Arabia is using surveillance um, that has been the surveillance technology that developed uh, in Israel, including, as it was reported in the Khashoggi case, uh, the, the, the sort of the technology to have monitored uh, contacts of him where, where, where Israeli developed and operated. So, yes, there is, um, to a certain extent, Israel is operating as a very important laboratory uh, for the development of both ideas, concepts, and technologies. And what is disturbing is that it is, rather than the world, what we call the world, will kind of contain Israel and tell, the, tell them, no, you cannot go on with a sort of colonial apartheid system, in Israel, 
um, what they do is that they import those ideas. And what we see is that the Greek military is now using drones from Israel and technologies of border control where the where the, the, the border between Israel and uh, sorry between Greece and Turkey is is is, is open to migrants. And um, I understand that also in Brazil, but um, that that is for you guys to research. Maybe Paulo yeah, can speak about the way the ways which those technologies are being used, you know, kind of military technologies are being used by the Brazilian police. Mm. 